Thanks, Dr. Lee. Good afternoon, Oklahoma City! This is actually a cool ass town. I got to spend some time get, eating barbecue. I get to go to Dallas quite a bit, and I love some Dallas barbecue, but you guys got some great barbecue. Backdoor barbecue, I actually went to uh, Leo's, great place. Um, hit Edna's last night, this is a cool town, looking forward to tonight, so if any of you wanna come out, um, there's gonna be a group of us definitely around. So, ending keynote on the second day, on a Friday, this is gonna be incredible. You guys are gonna leave charged up, um, I speak a lot, but when I do a, a bigger presentation, I always get very tactical. I like really digging in that like, this is what you're gonna leave and this is how you're gonna do it. And you had quite a few different presentations on SEO and pay-per-click. Some of this is gonna come together for you. Some of this is gonna be a little bit different because maybe it's a little bit more advanced. Uh, but there's something in this presentation for everyone in the room at any skill set. What I would say, uh, just that's my history, I'm not really going too much of it. I'm best, probably best known for my role at PubCon. PubCon is the largest search conference in the US. Um, it's now the oldest in search engine strategies, just shut it up, um, and we're still rocking. There's over 3,000 people in Vegas. At the end, last slide, I have a discount coupon from Brett Tabke, the owner, for you guys. It's the last coupon that's like available for PubCon. It's good through the 30th. So take it, use it. If you want to talk to me more about it at the end, we can. Now, we are gonna do something a little bit different that I'm gonna call this high intensity training, hit. Like if you're into the gym or working out, high intensity training, so this is fast. We're gonna go back and forth between pay-per-click and SEO so nothing gets too bland. Um, I'm gonna hit a lot of topics and really get into like this is the tactic and then move on. So you'll get a copy of the deck, hopefully they'll distribute it, if not, you can email me and I'll be happy to send it to you. But if you like this stuff, I mean there's a lot of really great things you could just take home and, and get right to work on. So start on the paid search side, expand the text ads. This is now live, but there's a little danger here. You can't turn all of your ads to just expanded text ads. Google actually recommends that you do when it's a bad recommendation. We've seen for many clients, if we turned off the old ads and just went with the larger ads, it was causing a problem with click-through rates, quality scores, and they've now pushed back the date that this doesn't go into full implementation until the end of this year. So there's still months that we have to work with this, but you should have the ads in there. So if you're running pay-per-click campaigns, you should have the regular sized ads, and you should have the new sized ads. These are best practices directly from Google. Take advantage of the new character limit, and one of the things that they recommend, which I was a little surprised, is put the brand name in the title. Typically, I like to put the keywords in the title, but if you've got a strong brand, and now that we've got more space in the title, put the brand there. Uh, create multiple versions, but apply our learnings. What we've learned in the past with pay-per-click, what we've seen work well, the calls to action, I mean, all best practices apply here. We just have a little bit more room to work with. Now, this is probably the highest, floofiest slide that I have, and everything else gets kind of hard-hitting. But here, for link building, Link building is still very valid. There's no reason not to be doing link building. We had a little bit of a war from Google of words a few years ago against link building, saying don't do it, get yourself in trouble. But a website's not gonna grow if you're not doing some type of link building. So there's safe ways to do it today. Portfolio style approach would be my number one recommendation. Use a lot of different strategies. We've, we've known, we've actually worked with quite a few different companies that only want to do one area. And then if Google comes in and says that one area is a bad tactic, you get a whole site penalized. Maximize your own sites. This is also your own social site. So if you have social profiles out there, make sure they're linking to you. If you have sub-brand sites, make sure they're, they're linking to you. A great example of this is Gap.com. Gap owns many different brands, and you can see at the top of the pages that you can get links to Gap, Gap Kids, Athleta, and there's that interlinking going on. It's perfectly okay. Link your brands together. You should be doing quarterly link audits. Now, I'm gonna show you some examples of some ruthless things that can happen if somebody's doing some bad link building toward you or trying to do some negative SEO. But quarterly link audits can really keep your, your link profile in good health. And when you do a link audit, you're looking for poor quality links and then you're sending to Google, here's the list of the links we don't want you to count. By doing this, you're being very proactive in what's soon to be a new Penguin update that's gonna be an ongoing link audit and avoid shortcuts. There's no shortcuts to SEO. SEO is not scalable. SEO is all about service and knowledge. Anytime somebody reaches out to you with a platform that's gonna make blogging easier or link building easier, avoid it, because it's not good. So now let's look at some, some tactics here. So this is using Majestic SEO. It's a great platform. Other platforms like it and Moz. There's also Ahrefs, and then you can use Raven, which uses some of these, pulls data from different places. 
But here's an example. This is for a website that's called retractableawnings.com. Retractableawnings.com got hit and suddenly they stopped getting traffic to the website. They didn't understand why. We did a quick link audit and found that they had links like buy Cialis online cheap, generic Viagra pills, purchase Tramadol. These links existed to every page in their website, not just the home page. And it wasn't like 30 links, it was thousands of links. And it wiped them out of Google. This is before the disavow tool came out. Although these links still exist, and now all these links are in a disavow for them. So they've been able to come back. But if we're really, we're looking at using a tool of where do we find links? So how do we use Majestic to mine for new links or new link ideas? Here's a better example. And this is for sunsetter.com. So this is somebody that's ranking on the term retractable awnings, which they want to rank on. We're going to do backlink research on a competitor. And we find that, okay, well, they've got pool companies that are linking to them. Well, that makes perfect sense. But maybe retractable awnings never really thought about using that as a strategy. Like, we have all these partners that sell our products. Let's go to our partners and make sure that our partners are linking back to us. So this is a great tactic and actually showing you how you would use a link building report. We have a, a sample majestic formula. This is a pretty good formula where you divide trust flow by citation flow. So this is more on the super advanced side. This is how you can identify low quality links, but you still have to do it by hand. If you don't understand that, then don't worry about it. Give it to your SEO team. Sub-navigation. So we're in the world of mobile first, and this is starting to scare me because I have the conversation more often than not lately that I have to explain good SEO architecture has to still exist in a mobile first world. People don't think that way. They build a website that's responsive. You've got the cute little hamburger menu, and then we forget about all of the old SEO value we used to have in things like footer navigation or sub-linked sub navigation. So we have to keep that in mind and build that into mobile responsive sites. This is a really big deal, and if there's, if there's anything you leave here with, this is probably one of the most important take homes. Because this is no different than when Flash got popular 10 years ago, and also we had all these websites built in Flash, and they lost their SEO traffic, we didn't know why, because Flash wasn't really indexable. So here, we can't forego for mobile usability, good SEO strategy, just because of a mobile device. Now, quick story here, and I, I do like telling my stories. So a client I was working with for well over a year, we were comparing the numbers, and they were doing really well. They hired a new COO to come in. The new COO said that somebody complained to her that the website was really crappy looking. This was a, they were in the, bi the business of enterprise risk management, so they should have done a risk analysis of changing the website. But they decided that, well, we want a really slick looking website, and this old website with 400 pages and this really robust blog that goes back 10 years should just be wiped out, and let's put a really cool website that looks great on our mobile phone. Great. They went from 1,000 visits a day, organic search, free traffic on the best myriad of keywords you've ever seen related to enterprise risk management to 10. They don't even rank on their company name. And I feel like we failed because we tried to guide them through the process saying, look, you can't just do this to the point that after we actually saw the results, I went to the meeting with the COO, which I don't do much anymore, and I sat with her and I was like, look, we're here to help you. We're here to raise you. We're here to lift you up. We're here to make you successful. What you just did is a gross error. We have to fix this. She was like, yeah, great. No problem. Let's start it. Next week, she's like, everything's on pause. Okay, good idea. Unlinked mentions. Unlinked mentions are a great tactic for link building. Again, we're still on the SEO side. We're going to switch over to pay-per-click in a minute. Unlinked mentions is where you've got press coverage and you didn't get a link back to your website. So let's say I'm on the Confluence website and there's a, great, there's a nice picture of me and my little bio, but there's no link back to my company or back to my page on the site. Somebody from my team should reach out to Confluence and say, well, can we get a link? That's an unlinked mention. You can find these by using th tools like Rank Tank. Um, there's, there's free tool, that, that's a free tool, but there's some, some great tools you can use, like SEO Book has a, a keyword explorer. You can set up Google Alerts. Um, there's a lot of ways to do this, but you should be looking at your company's name, your product brand names if they're unique, and your executive names. And always try to find, if you're getting earned media, that you've got links from those earned media back to your website. Um, on Moz, you can use the fresh index and get really fast stuff. And really, we, here we're looking for the exact search queries. 
Competitor loss links is another good tactic. So competitor loss links says that something just recently went away. So for some reason there was a link to your competitor from a valuable website on a good keyword and the page is gone. So a good thing to do here is set it up and look for lost links and see if you can go back and tell that website, like in my case the enterprise risk management company, oh you used to have a link to this company on a resource page, we have a better piece of content, why don't you put that page back up and link to us. Another thing you can do is look at new links for competitors, and again, this can give you some fresh ideas of places you can go, being, you can go acquire links. Local citations you heard about earlier from Greg. Greg does the best local presentation there is, so I'm gonna stay very light on this. But one thing to think about with local SEO is barnacle SEO. Barnacle SEO is a concept that was originally come up by Will Scott in, out of New Orleans. Great guy, and it's an incredible concept. If you're in the business of selling pizza, it's very unlikely you're gonna rank number one for the word pizza, but when you do a search for best pizza restaurants, you'll see that there's five different local sites that you can be on, like Yelp. So you have to make sure that you are in those places where they're gonna get the organic search traffic, and then like a barnacle, you're gonna be able to capture some of that nutrients that's flowing through those sites. So this is a great strategy, plus you're doing link building while you're doing it. Let's switch back to pay-per-click. High intensity training. Got it? All right, pay-per-click. So, ad customizers, again, these are more advanced tactics. I'm not gonna say bid up here, bid there. Ad customizers is where you can connect to a database in your company directly to the ads. So this makes sense in cases of like Amazon and eBay, but small businesses doesn't always make sense. But I have an example, it's pretty good. So I work with All My Sons Moving in Storage, it's my oldest client, largest client. And we try to figure out, well, how can we take advantage of surge pricing and truck capacity? So we know what the truck capacity is and we can tell if we're already booked out. If it's a Wednesday and the weekend is booked out, well, we don't wanna really gain too, much more, too many more bookings because we can't handle them. So this is a place where we could be tied to a database and increase the pricing of what we're willing to charge. So instead of $100 an hour, it's $150 an hour. And if we do get some of that work, it makes sense to do it. Think about Uber and surge pricing. But also we can give discounts. If we know that the following week is, is really bad, we could say discounted moves on Monday through Thursday. So there's two really great case studies that are available in Think with Google. So I got the URL up here, thinkwithgoogle.com forward slash case studies on this specific topic. And it shows incredible um, click-through rate and ROI increases from extra space storage and Rosetta Stone. Back to SEO and I'm gonna tell a quick story. So commitment, I start this slide with commitment, not with content, with commitment. Because content is great, but if you're not committed to constantly adding content to the website, it's not gonna work. You have to be committed to adding the content. So I went and met with a, who's now a client, um, South Florida Yacht Management. And I meet the owner of the company, he's 30 years old, and he's running a boat yard that's got hundreds of millions of dollars of boats, and he owns the boat yard. And I'm like blown away by this guy, I was like, Buddy, you're 30, like you're, you gotta tell me your story. His story is he started washing boats in high school, taking care of the boats he washed when the people were out of town, to working his way up to the marina, to managing marinas, now managing several boat yards and owning his own boat yard. And probably don't have much use for Seto around here, but Seto is a big deal. He actually just bought the Seto franchise for Fort Lauderdale. So this guy is rocking, he's 30 years old. So I sit down with him, I say, okay, well, let's come up with a content strategy. I mean, what do you do that's different when it comes to yacht management? He said, Joe, we just had a 70-foot Ferretti come from Brazil to have a hot tub installed on the top deck. I was like, okay, well, that sounds pretty cool. I mean, a boat coming all the way from Brazil to Fort Lauderdale just to get a hot tub seems interesting. Well, how much did that cost? He's like, oh, I was like about 150000 I was like, wow, that's great content. Let's write the story from beginning to end, from how they found you in Brazil to the travel of the boat to Fort Lauderdale to pictures of how it's all being done. That's telling the story. And you have to find that really with any of your clients, your own businesses, of what's the story you can tell on a regular basis. Have a content calendar. Content calendars are great because it helps you focus and having that commitment, remember I said commitment, to the content. But you've gotta be able to leave room in there because there will be some things that will pop up that might be a little bit more timely that you need to address. So have a calendar that's seasonal, have a calendar that's built out. I mean, obviously, if you're in the business of costumes, you better have been writing content about costumes as we're coming up to Halloween. Um, very important. Website content should be evergreen, should be content that doesn't necessarily get stale, longer, longer form content. Blogging content should be shorter, 
more timely, less formal. Very possible you do a great piece of content that goes on the website and then you've got four blog posts that are supporting it and linking into it. Have an optimization checklist. I'm gonna give you an SEO checklist and a pay-per-click checklist toward the end that are great to have, just like print it out that as you're doing the, your content, you're actually checking off this title tag is done, description tag is done, keywords are there. So content socialized. Freshen the content. This is a strategy that Will Reynolds talks about quite a bit and it's an incredible strategy. Look at your analytics and see what's performing. And in fact, when the website that did the enterprise risk management got nailed, I said the first pages we should put back up is let's go back and do three months when the site was rocking and let's look at the top 50 landing pages. There's the content we gotta put back up, easy. Well this strategy is look at that content and then see if you need to freshen it. If you're ranking on the best Halloween costume for 2015, that's cool, but we're 2016. If you have the quintessential article on how to use Google Tag Manager, but now we're on Google Tag Manager version three, you gotta keep going. So go back to the article, update it, freshen it, or create a new one and then redirect to it. Back to pay-per-click. Price ad extensions. Price ad extensions make a lot of sense if you're an e-commerce website, and what this does is it gives you more real estate. Basically, anytime Google gives us an opportunity to have more real estate in a paid ad, we want to take advantage of it. My first thought on the price ad extensions was, okay, great, if I'm selling sweaters for $49, I can put $49 in the price ad extension. But there's more that you can do here because you can actually do things like hourly. So maybe you're supporting a babysitting business and you can say hourly rates starting at $15 an hour. I'm from South Florida, so it's high. Here maybe it's like seven. Uh, but have an idea of where, ways to use this that you could take up more space. It allows you to increase the impact, it's very easy to update, it's scalable, use it. Mobile optimization. So before I talked about one of the biggest take homes you've gotta leave here with from my presentation is if you're doing a responsive site that you're considering old school SEO architecture in that site, use divs and spans, use accordions, but keep that sub navigation, that footer navigation where you can. But if you're not gonna do that and you're gonna have a separate mobile site, this is like the keys to the car of how to do it the right way. You have canonical tags on the main site and on the mobile site. The canonical tag on the mobile site says that the mobile page is actually this page on the main website. On the main website, there's an alternate tag that says the mobile page is actually this URL. What this does is this lets Google understand that all the content that you have on this desktop version actually equates to this little mobile page over here that doesn't have a lot of content on it. All of the link building you've done on the desktop version of the website equates to this page over here that's got very little content or no links on the mobile. And as things start to change and we maybe get mobile links, again, that can go back and forth by using the canonical and rel alternative the right way. Bid adjustments for devices, this is now fully live. Before this, it, we could bid adjust by mobile, up or down, but now we can bid adjust by desktop, mobile, up and down. So go back and rethink some of your strategies. Look for performance. Um, one of the biggest mistakes we made in Q4 of 2015 was not looking at performance by device for e-commerce clients, and we were finding that clients that had mobile-friendly sites and thought they had great conversions were actually having terrible mobile conversions. So these are, these are very easy reports you can pull. You just have to look at the dimensions and see, are your conversion rates different by device? And if they are, then they're probably more valuable and you can bid accordingly. So maintenance. Maintenance is very important on paid search and organic search. On the organic search side, we start off using Google Search Console, also what used to be called Google Webmaster Tools. Correct duplicate meta tags. Google actually goes in there and shows us pages they're identifying with the same titles or same descriptions or missing title tags. This is step one, fix this. Step two, correct or redirect 404s. So if you suddenly have a bunch of 404s, why is it happening? Was there good content on those pages? Google actually ranks the 404s in terms of importance. Guess what the, their terms of importance is? How many links there are to those pages? So if you've got 50 404s, focus on 10 a week and figure out what you should do. If you're not familiar with the 404, it means it's an error page and you either put the content back up or you can redirect that page to another URL on the site and that link, is then, that link value is then passed. Monitor your backlink counts. This is important because if somebody is trying to...